The Earth is called the Blue Planet for a good reason. 71% of it is covered with water, but unfortunately less than 1% of 1% of that is fresh water that we can actually use. At the same time, all of our lives depend on healthy rivers, lakes and wetlands in some way or another. Wetlands play a crucial role in keeping the earth system healthy, much like our kidneys help to keep our bodies healthy. The bad news is that we have already lost two-thirds of the world's wetlands by building almost 40,000 large dams to fulfill our demand for energy, food and water. To make things worse, massive hydropower dams are underway for some of the world's last great hotspots of biodiversity, such as the Amazon and Congo River, threatening the only kidney that we may have left. So what we need are new ways for quantifying water resources across entire continents and ensure that there is enough water for both humans and a healthy environment. The great news is that advances in satellite technology nowadays allow us to do exactly this. A rapidly growing fleet of satellites is constantly monitoring every component of the water cycle, much like flying doctors constantly monitoring a sick patient in my research, I'm using multiple flying doctors to model floods and their role in the water cycle across Australia's largest developed river system, the Murray-Darling Basin. The Landsat satellite is one of the oldest doctors and has been taking images of every corner of the Earth since more than 30 years. Using classification algorithms, we can map surface water and researchers in our lab have done this for thousands of images to create a historic record showing the distribution of surface water through time for an area twice the size of France. I then combined this time series with data on river flow, rainfall, evapotranspiration and soil moisture to create simple yet incredibly useful statistical inundation models. These models can predict the extent of flooding when the satellite's view was obstructed by clouds or during the peak of floods, giving us a more detailed picture compared to existing approaches. The method cannot only quantify the time it takes for floods to propagate along the river, it's also based on thousands of regular grid cells and uses open source data and programming languages, making it easy to apply to other river systems across the world. The world's last kidney is in danger, but I believe that with the help of flying doctors, we can provide the holistic medicine that is needed to cure the freshwater problems of the future.